Yeah, I'm taking a nap. I deserve it. After all, I just saved the entire planet. That's right. The whole planet and everyone on it, you included. You see, it all started far out in space. I mean, far out. They have this popular chain of fast food restaurants. They're all over the galaxy. You'll find one on practically every asteroid. Welcome to Neptunian Nuclear Chicken. May I take your order, please? I will have the Jupiter-sized module of chicken wings. Extra crunchy. Jupiter space back. Extra crunchy. Oh, and a side of coleslaw. One side of coleslaw. Thank you. Now you might be wondering how I know about this, right? Well, I've seen this cartoon before. <laughs> so anyway, this chain of restaurants is owned by this not very nice guy. What do you mean? I can't open another bajillion restaurant. No one tells me what I can't do. But Commander Harlan, we have not enough chickens. Maybe not, but we will. Come with me. Where are we going? Anticipating this need, I set up a secret research outpost on Earth. In no time at all, they were streaking towards Earth, where certain individuals you may recognize were stopping for chow. We're just going in for a small snack. Do you know what a small snack is, Garfield? Do you know what a foolish question is, John? Even if you took every chicken on this planet, it would not be enough for your needs, Commander. That is why we've developed a ray that will turn every man, woman, and animal on this planet into <laughs> a chicken. Bring in the test subject, and we'll see how it works. Pepperoni and a mushroom. Uh. A sausage and a black olive. <laughs> Meat lovers is special. <laughs> ay, 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 leave some room, Garfield. We're making a lasagna. <laughs> I don't see your delivery boy working today, Vito. Oh, I just sent him to make a delivery across the street. He'll be right back. No, he wouldn't be, because the delivery boy was about to become the delivery chicken. But I just came to deliver a pizza. Just stand there for one more moment. <laughs> this ray, this will really transform him into, yes. <laughs> a chicken! Oh. I have to... You owe me... Get back to Vito's... Twelve... Dollars for the... Pizza plus... It worked! Can we fry him now? Not yet. First, I have to bombard the entire city. Everyone is getting zapped by the rays! It will work faster on some than others, but soon they will all be chickens! <laughs> Everyone? Every Earth creature, except anyone who is at this moment ingesting an inhuman quantity of ricotta cheese, tomato paste, and pasta! Um. <laughs> 
Who would imagine that an inhuman quantity of ricotta cheese, tomato sauce, and pasta could taste so good? Mmm, <laughs> that was great. Peyote, something wrong? Uh-uh. Oh. <laughs> that's the worst chicken imitation I've ever seen. <laughs> and that was the best one. What do I do? What do I do? I know. I'll ask John. We should be going, Garfield. We have to stop on the way home and... Tell me it's not so. Tell me John and Odie haven't been turned into chicken. <laughs> Italian chicken. Chicken parmesan. I have to get out of this coop. Uh, a restaurant. <laughs> help. I need help. Lots of help. A policeman. He help. Officer. Officer. I would like to report two people and a dog being mysteriously transformed into chickens. Buck, 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 buck. Ah! Crazy things are happening. As the chickening of the population spread across the state, the governor called a hurried press conference. <laughs> this is awful. This is a disaster. Things could not be worse. this be a lesson to you? Never say things could not get worse. Things will always find a way of getting worse. It landed in the park. It was met by the rotten commander Harlan. It will take many trips, but we'll transport all the chickens back home. <laughs> I can hardly wait to start frying them all up. Frying them all up? How are you going to to get them all into our spacecraft. Simple. Chickens love corn. I need to find some way to get inside. <laughs> and then he... <clears throat> I joined the procession of poultry. And I would have made it too, except I suddenly remembered something awful. <laughs> I'm allergic to chicken feathers. <laughs> Aren't you even going to say gesundte? Stop that, cat. <laughs> <laughs> Turn me into a chicken. Turn everyone into a chicken. You notice this guy only has one idea? But I'm not. I need. I need. Huh? <laughs> See the two with the real dumb expressions? I think those are John and Odie. You might as well give up. I'm trapped. Farewell, Cathood. I hope I'm this good looking when I'm a chicken. I don't know how you escaped my transformation, Ray. Cats, do you by any chance eat huge quantities of lasagna? Well, that explains it. But you'll never eat it again, you hear me? From now on until you're served in a bucket. It's chicken feed for you. 
No, no! Not me! I'm not! I'm <laughs> oh no, all out of chicken. Oh, but wait, now's my chance to try out these earth chickens. So now the question is, how do I change everyone in town back into everyone in town? Oh, you look positively scrumptious. Uh, <gasps> hey, this might work out. Don't worry, you're going to be delicious. Now where's that spatula? <laughs> so how would you like someone to prevent you from winding up next to a little cup of cold slaw? Please! Well, I think we can make a deal. And a deal we made. And I'll say this for the guy. He was a chicken of his word. He told me how to change him back, and then he changed everyone else back, including you. He even blanked out all your memories, so you have no idea that you were ever a chicken. Then, as he agreed, he and his aide left the Earth after promising never to return for takeout. And that's how I saved the entire planet. And now everything is back to normal. I'm going to go start making dinner, Garfield. We're having, uh... Um, nut fried chicken. Lasagna. Fine. Like I said, everything is back to normal. Except, of course, John does lay an egg once in a while, which I don't understand at all because boy chickens don't lay eggs. Gas bill, water bill. I'll get it. Past due. Please pay immediately or we will send a guy named Bruno over to punch out your lights. That's nice how they don't put pressure on you. Uh, I don't understand why I never have any money. I hope you didn't want any because I only got a dozen. <gasps> I understand why I never have any money. What is it, Odie? Oh, that's the lottery ticket I bought. Gee, wouldn't it be nice to win the 27 gazillion dollars? Think how wonderful life would be with that kind of money. What are you telling me, Odie? Oh, it's time for them to draw the winning lottery number. Oh, it's a big waste of time, but I might as well watch. In a moment, we'll be drawing the winning number in this week's Super Mega Jackpot Lucky 7 Ultra Snazzy Lottery which is worth 27 gazillion dollars. I shouldn't get my hopes up. Mm. Let me see that ticket. The odds against me winning are astronomical. Still, it would be so wonderful. And now, here's the winning number. Give me my ticket back, Garfield. And the winning number is seven, nine, four, five, Ooh. zero, oh. six. Ah. And the last number is oh. Oh. three. <laughs> Gee, I got all ten numbers. Looks like I won the 27 gazillion dollars. You know, a lot of people, if this happened to them, would go absolutely nuts and start leaping around and dancing. And you know what else? Huh? I'm like a lot of people. Yeah! <laughs> hey, I'm rich! Join him. That's 
That's right. The winning ticket in the Super Mega Jackpot Lucky 7 Ultra Stazzy Lottery. Oh, that's great, Mr. Arbuckle. We're closed for the weekend right now, but you bring that ticket down here Monday morning, and we'll give you your 27 gazillion dollars. I'll be there. Guys, what shall we do to celebrate? <laughs> Huh? More pizza? Great! Let's go to Vito's and buy pizza. Huh? No, I have a better idea. I did not get this straight, Mr. Arbuckle. Tell me again, how many pizzas you wish to buy? For the tenth time, Vito, I'm not here to buy pizzas. I want to buy the pizzeria. The whole place! <sighs> how I've dreamed of this moment. I hit the lottery! I won 27 gazillion dollars! Mr. Arbuckle, was that the name? Hi, I'm a reporter with Channel 4. Did I hear you right? You're the big lottery winner? Hey, that's me. Vito, name your price, then double it. <laughs> First make pizzas, then talk money. That's right, Sid, the big lottery winner. Get a camera crew down here and we'll do a headline story. Tomorrow, Odie, I'm going on the biggest shopping spree you ever saw. After all, I've got 27 gazillion dollars to spend. By the time I'm done here, you may be down to 26. The city was all abuzz today as lottery winner John Arbuckle began spending some of the 27 gazillion dollars he won in this weekend's super mega jackpot lucky seven ultra snazzy lottery. This morning, he purchased seven cars, one for each day of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, Saturday, I like to take half the day off. He also picked out the new home he will purchase. It has 600 rooms. When one gets dirty, I'll just move to another. In his new mansion, I asked him what would be his greatest extravagance. That would be Garfield. <laughs> oh, this rich stuff is so good. <laughs> Come on, Garfield. We're going back to the old house for one last time. Oh, I can't move. I can't walk. I couldn't eat another bite if my life depended on it. Uh, how soon is dinner? Let's go. My new tailor, Armando, is going to meet me there. I'm not going to miss this house. Me neither. How about you, Odie? <laughs> huh? Mr. Arbuckle, I am Armando. I'm a tailor. I'm known as Armando the Tailor. Oh, come in, Armando the Tailor. Odie, you can't be serious. You're gonna miss this house? Why? We're gonna live in a mansion with hot and cold running servants. We're gonna have a swimming pool. And like all rich people, we're never gonna go in it. Okay, so this house is the only home you've ever known. So? You think I'm gonna miss it? Miss my favorite corner to sleep in? Miss my favorite window screen to hang on? No! Think of the mill service in the new house. You like it, Mr. Harbuckle? Love it. I want 50 more outfits, Armando the Tailor. Huh? Uh, excuse me. Mr. Harbuckle! Oh, what would you like me to do with your old clothes? Oh, throw them away. There's a trash can out front by the curb. Hello? Oh, Mr. Barker. Sorry to bother you at home on the weekend, Arbuckle, but I wanted to make sure you were working on those drawings I need. You what? I said I quit, Mr. Barker. Ugh. I don't have to work for you anymore. I'm rich. Monday morning, I turn in my winning lottery ticket here. My lottery ticket here. Oh! My lottery ticket. It's in that shirt I just told Armando the tailor to throw away. <gasps> <laughs> Arbuckle, Arbuckle, I can't stand employees who quit. You're fired. Stop! This is a catastrophe! <laughs> John doesn't have catastrophes anymore. He's rich. I made it just in time. Stop! Stop that garbage truck! I need my old clothes back! <laughs> No, you don't, Mr. Arbuckle. They were so out of style. My lottery ticket. It was in with these clothes. <sighs> oh, no. <laughs> we're the 
last stop before they take the trash out to the pier and dump it. <laughs> oh, great. Now some fish is gonna get our money. You can tell this is an emergency because I didn't stop for ice cream. in the ocean already? Oh, no. We don't do that anymore. You don't? Nah. It's bad for the environment. <laughs> <laughs> now we just burn it. Oh. oh, that's the trash we just picked up. Makes a lot of nice smoke, don't it? Well, it was nice being rich while it lasted. <sighs> All the pasta I could eat, finally. But you know, I don't have it so bad. I've got you and Odie, I've got this house. You may find it hard to believe, Garfield, but I would have missed this house. You're right, I find it hard to believe. And I still have my job with Mr. Barker. <gasps> no, I don't have my job with Mr. Barker. Oh, what am I gonna do? I... <laughs> Odie, I don't have time for whatever it is. I quit my job. I... My pants. I took it off when we got home and... Does this mean we're rich again? Uh, just let me have the winning ticket, Mr. Arbuckle. I'd like the 27 gazillion in large bills, please. For a check made out to Vito's Pizzeria. The winning numbers were seven, nine, four, five, <laughs> zero, six, three, and hmm, wait a minute. What's wrong? Is something wrong? This last number on your ticket isn't a three. It's an eight. It was covered by a stain. It smells like it was pizza sauce. I'm sorry, Mr. Arbuckle. This is huh? not a winning ticket. Huh? Excuse me. I think I have the winning lottery ticket. Yes, you do, ma'am. You win the 27 gazillion dollars. Oh, that's nice. I can get Mr. Barker to give me my job back. All it will take is a sincere apology. And begging. Oh, don't forget to begging. Well, guys, it looks like we lost 27 gazillion dollars. You know, a lot of people, if this happened to them, would go absolutely nuts and start crying and whining. And you know what else? Huh? Huh? I'm like a lot of people. <laughs>
Oh, hi, Odie. I'm just about to take a test call. How brave Ready? are you? Here's your first situation. A poisonous snake is coming at you. I'm not afraid. A giant grizzly bear is attacking. I'm not afraid. A man-eating lion is loose. I'm not even afraid of a cat-eating lion. An army of monsters and werewolves and vampires is attacking. I am absolutely, definitely, utterly not afraid. Oh, Garfield. My nieces Drusilla and Minerva are coming to visit. <laughs> but I, I, I locked the door, barred the windows, we have to move to another country. Help! <laughs> Snakes and birds and monsters can only eat you. These are John's nieces. Don't you remember them from last season? Show 17? <laughs> We hate it. That must be them. We have to hide, Odie. Under John's bed, quick. Hi, Uncle John. Great to see you, Minerva and Drusilla. Don't worry, Odie. Even if we have to stay under here the rest of our lives, I'm prepared. I knew John's nieces might come back someday, so I stored 25 crates of canned lasagna. Gee, I wish I'd have brought some for you. What can they do to us? They can dress us up in frilly doll clothes like they did last time. But I'm determined. I'm absolutely not going to let them do that to me again. No! Stop! Help! Don't! Go to the Man Society! Go somebody! And the worst part is, I don't even look good in this color. Hey! Bridal gown for you to try on! You'll be so beautiful! Yeah. This is not good. You ladies know how hard it is to run in high heels. Oh my goodness. I mean, <laughs> badness. The kitty cat can fly. Let's dress him up as a flight attendant next. My, you're a plump one. Almost big enough for my oven. I'm sorry, Mrs. Cauldron. Is she a witch? She looks like a witch. Maybe I am, and maybe I'm not. But, my, you're an adorable little girl. And, my, you're an adorable little girl. And, my, you're oh. not. And, my, you're not exactly Miss Universe yourself, lady. <laughs> Girls, uh, let's let Mrs. Cauldron get home with her shopping, okay? Oh, thank you. And maybe you'll come and visit me sometimes, little lady. <laughs> Let's take you girls inside and read you a story. Yeah, we want to hear a story about a witch. Yeah, we want to hear Hansel and Gretel. It's got a witch Okay, in it. Hansel and Gretel it is. Odie, huh? if you laugh at the way I look, if you so much as giggle. Uh -huh. Huh? Good. <laughs> meow. He's right. And so Hansel and Gretel follow the breadcrumbs to the house of the Wicked Witch. <gasps> the Wicked Witch invited them inside and offered them gingerbread. <gasps> Don't just stand there, Odie. We have to prepare to defend ourselves. That story can't last forever. Hmm. I'm going on a spying mission to find out what the enemy is up to. And so the evil witch tried to push Hansel and Gretel into the oven, but they were too fast for her. 
Never mind the fortress. It wouldn't keep him out anyway. I've got a better idea. Whew. I need to go to the market so I can make dinner for our guests. Keep an eye on Drusilla and Minerva while I'm out, Garfield. I'm counting on you. You've made this mistake before. Oh. This is the moment of truth, puppy face. We have to act fast. We have a nice prom dress for you to try on. Look, Drusilla. You're Drusilla. I'm Minerva. All right. I can't tell us apart. There's candy. This is so good. <laughs> Breadcrumbs like in the story. Mm. We'll lead them to Mrs. Cauldron's house. Oh, you came to visit me. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Come in. We'll have tea. I like tea. I want hot cocoa. Oh, come in. We have so much to talk about. <laughs> That'll keep him away while I do something of vital importance. <laughs> of course, a nap. Ah, <laughs> oh, poor Mrs. Cauldron, such an odd lady. Always dressing up like a wicked witch. Hey, what if she is a wicked witch? Nah, there's no such thing, and besides, it isn't Halloween. <sighs> I think I'll just give me some good, good stuff. <laughs> Bubble, my fine potions. I just need to add some Eye of Newt, three ounces of raven toenails. <laughs> and the final ingredient, two identical bratty nations. Help! You mean old wicked witch! You wouldn't do this if our friend Garfield is here. Well, your friend Garfield isn't here. And even if he was, he'd be too fat and lazy to help you. Garfield! She's a wicked witch! She's a wicked witch! And she's gonna do wicked witch things to John's nieces! I've just gotta save them. Yeah. Ow. Wait a minute, do I? Yes, I guess I have to. Doesn't matter. You're both ingredients. <laughs> I hand those annoying children. Hey, do I know how to make a big entrance or what? Oh, <laughs> this is perfect. I have a recipe that calls for a goat. Huh? <gasps> and just where do you think you're gonna get a goat at this hour? <laughs> oh, sure, do it the easy way. <laughs> oh! What 
happened? Where am I? Garfield! Where are Drusilla and Minerva? The evil witch is putting them into the twin casserole. I have to save them. <laughs> Drusilla! Minerva! Don't worry. Garfield's coming to save you. Don't put them into your recipe, Mrs. Coleman. Don't! Oh, hello, Pussycat. Did you come to join us? We're having tea with Mrs. Cauldron, and we're learning all sorts of interesting things. <laughs> you knew it was a dream sequence all along. Why didn't you tell me? Thank you for a lovely conversation, Mrs. Cauldron. Oh, and all the things you taught us. Oh, come back and visit us any time, dears. <laughs> Thank you for coming to get us, Garfield. Mrs. Cauldron convinced us we shouldn't make you play dress up anymore. <laughs> ah, gee. <laughs> I guess everything turned out great after all. He'll make a great goat. Let's make him into a big one. <laughs> I don't feel like lasagna for dinner tonight. For some reason, I have bah, craving for old tin cans. Meow. Cannot go with us! Garfield, I promised Liz a night out with just the two of us. Besides! <laughs> you're not allowed in Vito's anymore. Not after what you did last time there. Uh. No, we're not giving up. Wait here. Suction cups, I've been saving them for an emergency. And right now, not getting to go to Vito's is an emergency. Here, put one on each paw and do as I do. So, how did he get himself banned from Vito's? I think it was the trick with the bungee cord. Let us see. A table eight ordered a plate of pasta with a meat sauce. <laughs> a chicken of parmesan with a side of penne. <laughs> a plate of spaghetti marinara. Hey, where did all the other dishes go? <laughs> uh, could I get an order to go? You pasta pilfering a pussycat. You fettuccine filching a feline. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the marinara sauce. Yeah. She is a perfect. Truly throw myself into everything I cook. And after they hauled Vito out of the marinara sauce and gave him artificial respiration, he <laughs> banned Garfield from his restaurant. In fact, he banned all animals. I can't even take Odie in. So I guess we won't be seeing Garfield or Odie at Vito's for a while. They wouldn't dare to try and get in there. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Arbuckle. Vito's lasagna just for the two of you. Mmm, it smells delicious. He's <laughs> cause it is delicious. Oh, Vito's lasagna. So close and yet so far. The lasagna just sits there, looking delicious, mocking me. Allowing itself to be consumed by others. There must be a way to get us in there where that lasagna is. 
This is called thinking, Odie. You ought to try it sometime. Okay. <laughs> Don't complain. You're just jealous because I have the legs for this. It is always a pleasure to welcome you into my humble restaurant, Mr. Arbuckle, providing you come without the cat. I told Garfield he had to stay home. And he obeys me, because I'm firm and... <gasps> huh? oh. Ah, you brought your little bambinas, and how charming they are. Garfield? Garfield? Where is that handsome cat? I'm going to take you home and lock you in the basement until you're... Ah, Buckle, <gasps> what a nice surprise running into you here. Uh, uh, Mr. Barker, yes, uh, Liz, this is Mr. Barker. I do cartoons for a magazine he publishes. Nice to meet you, Mr. Barker. Uh. You know, Arbuckle, I was thinking you weren't the right kind of person to fit in with my magazine. You're firing me? I was considering it, but seeing you here with your lovely family... F -f -f family no. <laughs> I misjudged you. Families are the bedrock of society. I like employing a man with a lovely family. How long have you two been married? M married Oh, no, we're not. Uh, huh? Liz and I have been married for... Uh, how long is it, dear? Mm -hmm. Ten five years. years. Uh, five years. Uh, ten years. Hey, I forget how long I've been married, too. The point is, you have these two lovely daughters. <laughs> uh, Vito, more lasagna. Uh, coming right up, Mr. Arbuckle. I never knew Mr. Arbuckle had kids. I didn't want to say anything, but the one on the right, she has the face of a puppy dog. More <laughs> Vito's lasagna on the way. Hiya, Normal. What you been up to? Oh, same thing as always. Just being adorable. Mm -mm. Vito sure smells great. Oh, sure does. Wish I could get me some of that delicious food. Whoa. This way. Oh, the viewers of my show are absolutely going to uh. love this. John, tell him the truth. Tell him we aren't married and these aren't our daughters. But he's my boss, and he thinks it's nice that I have a wife and kids. Huh? Hi-ho, food fanatics! This is everyone's favorite food critic, Eddie Gorman! <laughs> Coming to you live from Vito's Pizzeria. Buongiorno. Vito's is a fabulous place to revel in ravioli and munch on manicotti. Have on the side, mm -hmm. excuse me, Mr. Gorman, more pasta for table two. Oh, let's see who's having this feast at table two. Ah, I like a man who cares enough about his children to feed them well. They sure have healthy appetites. Yeah. Hey, isn't that Garfield? Yeah, that's Garfield. I'd know that sound anywhere. They're having a feast in there. How do we get ourselves some of that? We need dresses and wigs. Where are we gonna? I'll do anything for Italian food. Huh, I can't believe it. I'm even cuter this way. This is John Arbuckle. He's a cartoonist who works for my magazine. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Arbuckle. And this is his wife, Liz, and their two beautiful daughters. Uh... Hey, let us have some of that. <clears throat> Let us have some of that! Excuse me, there are four beautiful daughters. John Arbuckle, you and your wife Lynn have such lovely children. My brother is married? With four kids? Oh, Dad! It says on TV that John not only married Liz, but that they have four daughters. Why didn't our daughter tell us if she married that? cartoonist. John, how often do you come here to Vito's with Miss Arbuckle and the little Arbuckle children? 
Uh, well, I, uh, <laughs> well, that is... Oh, John, this has gone on oh. long enough. Either you tell them the truth or I will. Uh, I have something to tell you uh, about my wife and daughters. <laughs> hey, you notice when John lies, he turns the same color as Vito's red sauce. Mm. I want another meatball. Mm. I want six meatballs mm. and more garlic bread. Uh. I cannot believe it. Mr. Arbuckle's daughters, they eat more than that cat of his. What is it you're oh. trying to tell me, Mr. Arbuckle? Uh, well, you know, I, I work for Mr. Barker here, and... Oh, indeed he does. I'm so impressed with his great family here, I'm giving oh. Arbuckle a big promotion and a raise. Oh. Oh. Oops, dropped my napkin. I don't look good with marinara huh? sauce all over my dress. Mamma mia! What is this? <gasps> a pussycat huh? in my restaurant! And a puppy dog! And another pussycatto! And you! Check or treat! Could I have another pepperoni pizza, please? All of you! All of you! All of you! Out of my restaurant! Out! Oh. And you can make that to go. Huh? Ah! Uh, Arbuckle, oh. your daughters are cats and dogs? I can explain, Mr. Barker. Well, no, I can't, but... <laughs> the truth, John. <laughs> women and children first, especially cats dressed like women and children. When I get my hands on you, cat! <laughs> Look out! This is terrible! They simply ruined the end of my show! <laughs> All of you out, and never talk in my pizzeria again! Oh. Mr. Barker, Liz isn't my wife, and these obviously were not my daughters, and I'm sorry I let you believe that. Ha 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 this is the funniest thing I ever saw. Draw it up as a cartoon and send it in. I'll give you a bonus. There you see, John. You kept your job. Things didn't turn out so bad. Whew. We didn't get dessert. <laughs> I guess everything did work out okay. We didn't get dessert. Almost forgot. Here is the bill for what your daughters mm. ate. Pay me and then never come in again. <sighs> everything worked out almost okay. We still didn't get dessert. Vito will get over it in a day or so. He always does. You're right. But right now I just want to relax and not have anyone else upset with me. Surprise! Congratulations on your wedding. Congratulations on your marriage. I, I know you'll be real happy. Why oh. didn't you tell us? I, I can explain. Listen, I can explain! Hey, Odie. Wedding cake. We did get dessert. <laughs> no, no, not the couple on top. That's plastic. Mr. Allwork, I'm only a few days behind in my payments. I'm just waiting for a check from my employer. And my employer is waiting for a check from you, Arbuckle. Don't make me sue you. <laughs> oh, John's late on a bill for something or other. That guy came by to demand payment. Oh. 
You'd really sue me? Over such a small amount of money? I'm a lawyer, Arbuckle. It's my job to sue people. Listen to my schedule for this afternoon. One o'clock, sue someone. Two o'clock, sue someone. Three o'clock, go visit my cousin Sue. Three thirty, sue Sue. Four o'clock, stop at the market, buy a gallon of milk. Four thirty, sue the market, the dairy, and the cow the milk came from. Any questions? Nope. Tell me, Arbuckle, how is it you're always low on cash? Here you are, Mr. Arbuckle. Twelve pepperoni pizzas for your pussy cat. <sighs> Any questions? This is a baby kangaroo. Not as cute as me. And this is a baby panda. Definitely not as cute as me. <laughs> Hey, what are you complaining about? I gave you a crust. Not as cute as me. Not as cute as me. All right, a half a crust. <laughs> Guys, I need to make some fast money. I'm going to have a garage sale. I need things to sell. <laughs> Garfield, look around. Find things that we want to get rid of. Things that are utterly and totally useless. <laughs> I love watching nature films on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Does after we drop my son at home, take me to the courthouse. Very well, Mr. Allberg. Who are you suing today? I don't know, but I'll find someone. Dad, could we maybe do something? I mean, you and me? I have work to do, Jack. Besides, I just picked you up at your baseball game. Yeah, and you sued the umpire. Oh, there's that Arbuckle fellow I may be suing. He seems to be having some sort of yard sale. Dawes, stop for a moment or I'll sue you. Let me sell Nermal. Oh, let me sell Nermal, please. Maybe I can get three dollars for this old lamp. Why won't you let me sell Nermal? Garfield, while I go look for more junk, put price tags on everything. And remember, price things based on what they're really worth. There you go, Odie. What you're really worth. <laughs> Two cents. A lot of worthless junk. I may have to sue him over this. Hey, Dad, look at the neat puppy. He's real cute, and he's only two cents. You want him, son? Maybe I can negotiate the price down to a penny. <laughs> Please, Dad. Oh, all right. Arbuckle, I'm buying this dog. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Allwork. Odie's not for sale. Yes, he is. He has a price tag, and I have agreed to pay the price specified on the tag. That's a legally binding contract. Honor it, or I'll sue you. Huh? I owe you two cents. Do you have change for a hundred? <laughs> oh, and I'll need a receipt. Oh. Look, I know he had a price tag on him, but it was just a joke. A joke? Sorry, Arbuckle. I know you're attached to this dog, but my son wants it, and I always give my son anything he wants. Yeah, as long as it doesn't take any of your time. <gasps> Garfield, have you thought of anything, anything you can do to make this situation better? Uh, I marked Nermal down to a penny. Uh, too bad about Odie. I always liked him. He was a little damp around the tongue, but he was a good dog. Hey, Squeak, you gonna finish that piece of cheese? I was planning. Why? Because John's not gonna feed me until I figure out how to get Odie back. Ah! Squeak, do you think you and the Mouse Network could figure out where they took the pooch? Leave it to me, Goff. I'd do anything for you. Anything? Make that almost anything. Barrister Lane. 
That's in the fancy part of town. No, figures. I got it from an upper-class rodent. So how do you figure to get the guy to give Odie back? I shall employ a brilliant plan. I hope I have one by the time I get there. Hi, boy. Huh? How about if I throw the stick and you fetch it? Uh -uh. Want to go for a run? Uh -uh. <sighs> Whoa, nice place Odie gets to live in. If you're wondering, I still don't have that brilliant plan. Oh, it's you. Hmm. Did you come to try to get the dog back? <laughs> well, Mr. Allwork gave explicit instructions. The dog now belongs to his son, Jack, and that's final. <gasps> hmm. <laughs> no, you are not a little girl come to play with Master Jack. You are that pussycat again. Good day. Hey, uh, Mr. Butler, sir. Uh, it's me, Avito, here to deliver a pizza to the little boy uh, and uh, Papala with the wet tongue. No, you're not a pizza delivery man. You're still that pussycat. Good day. No, you're not the abominable snowman. Eh, it was worth a try. You're that pussycat again. You forced me to use our state-of-the-art security system, which fortunately includes an abominable snowman catapult. Huh? John needs to get one of those. You never know when an abominable snowman is going to come around. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get Odie back. I don't even know where I got those costumes. Huh? Hey, he left that upstairs window open. Okay, it's not a brilliant plan, but it's close. You don't want to do anything with me, do you, puppy? Uh -uh. I didn't need a dog for that. I could get that from my dad. Huh? You miss where he used to live, don't you? <laughs> well, that's where you should be. Come on, I'll take you home. <laughs> It appears that pussycat had the good sense to give up and leave. Now to find Odie. Oh, no, he did not. He's climbing into the master bedroom. Now to run from the butler. <laughs> no, I'm going to sue you, and that's that. Fine. See you for dinner Sunday night, Mom. <laughs> what does this mean? I don't know, but I'll bet I get sued. <sighs> I'm dreadfully sorry, Mr. Allwork. This pussycat breached security, and now I see that young Jack is missing. Also, the dog you bought him. Missing? Well, it's obvious where they are. Get the car outdoors. And you, Cat, they're coming with me. Oh, nothing's going right. Even with the garage sale, I still don't have enough money to pay off that bill. Garfield's gone, and I may have lost Odie forever. Maybe not forever. Uh, Odie, you're back! <laughs> I'm never going to let you get away from me again. You'll have to. They don't let you have dogs in prison. Mr. Allwork! I bought that dog fair and square. Dad! Not now, Jack. You stole him back, and I'm calling the police and having you charged with grand theft puppy. But, Dad! Quiet, Jack! Don't make me sue my own son. I'll do it if I have to. Hey, let the kid get a word in edgewise. Dad, I gave the dog back to him. Why? I thought you wanted that dog. What is it you really want? Why won't he answer me? What is it he really wants? 
Whatever it is, I, I can afford it. A dog is great, but he's no substitute for a parent. Yeah, I, I suppose you're right. Mr. Olwerk, you asked me to remind you those people you needed to sue? They can wait, Dawes. I need to spend more time with my son. What's it gonna be, son? Ball game? Movie? Anything! Arbuckle, uh, that bill you owe, uh, don't worry, we'll work out something. And thanks. Thank you. Well, I still have to figure out a way to make some money. <laughs> I know, I know. You're going to suggest selling normal. Huh? No? Oh, I'm sorry, Garfield. Well, what is your idea? <laughs> <laughs> what? We'll give him away, then charge people to take him back. We'll make millions. Millions, I tell you. Millions! <laughs> <laughs>